Uh, Cam Baines from Body Jar, welcome to Australian Musician. Well, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on. Yeah, we're talking to you because Body Jar are playing the Beer and Barbecue Festival uh, at the Adelaide Showgrounds, July 23 to 25. Uh, are you a beer and barbecue kind of guy? Yeah, I am actually. I, lo- I love a barbecue. I've got a Weber Q at home that I, I probably use two or three times a week. So, you know, I'm pretty into it. Um, you know, a couple of the guys are vegetarian, but I definitely don't don't go down that path. Um, yeah, so I've got a few a few handy little recipes. Yeah, um, you know, I kind of I kind of don't drink as much beer as I used to. I'm more of a kind of a red wine dude, I guess now. Got any barbecue tips? Um, well, on the Weber, there's some awesome shit you can do. I mean, if you've got like a, a foil pan and a little uh, a little roasting tray, you know, you can do a good pork belly or a nice lamb roast, or you know. You can get pretty gourmet, you know, but yeah. we do, we do like, you know, we do lots of veggies on there and like, you know, like grilled asparagus and stuff like that. And, cool. uh, you know, we try, we try to make it fancy, especially on the weekends and stuff, you know, yeah. so I'm um, into it. The, the band even released your own gin uh, recently. Why did you do that? And will, <laughs> it, will it be available at the festival? Uh, I hope it will be. Yeah, you can still, I think there's still like 20 something bottles left at the distributor or something. But um, but yeah, we did that because we were trying to make some money to make this record, you know. So, and we haven't been able to play shows for, you know, over a year. So um, I think a lot of bands are doing a sort of Friends of Rum have released like a, a goon, goon bag of wine, you know. So I guess bands have sort of, have got to diversify a little bit if they want to um, continue on because we're, you know, we need that money to record our next record. So we thought, let's try and do something else. We're releasing a beer as well. We've done another beer even before that. So, and we've re-released a lot of like old, uh, you know, our first three albums on vinyl, which have, you know, sold out really quickly. So we're ready to go, you know, so that that's enabled us to sort of keep moving forward, you know, as a band, I guess, and without playing shows. But finally, it looks like we're, we're going to play a few. So we, we've done a couple, but, you know, nothing like we would usually do. So... Yeah. Um, the Beer and Barbecue Festival, 28 days are on the bill with you. you. You must have played some gigs with them in the past. Oh, heaps of gigs going right back to the 90s, playing the art house with them when they used to wear Adidas tracksuits, you know. Um, they were great. They're great bands. Just, just funny guys, you know. We grew up with those guys, so they're like brothers, you know. it's We've done tons of tours with them. Uh, they're just funny funny dudes, and they've got, they've got good party songs, you know. I reckon they, um, they always get the crowd going. Yeah, they're, they're, they're really cool. So, so it's those guys. And I think, who, who else is on the bill? Oh, um, Smith Street Band. Smith Street Band. But I think they're on a different day than us, unfortunately, because I really like them. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's a pretty strong sort of lineup. I'm, I'm hanging for it. Yeah. So when you look back at your career, what stands out most? Uh, we got mentioned on Neighbours once. So <laughs> that, was a, that was a big thing. <laughs> No, we are. Uh, I don't know. I guess you know we've had our sort of success. I guess in the early two thousands, that was our kind of time. You know, we were doing it full time, and you know we had, we did a couple of gold records, and we we played a lot overseas. We toured with Blink One Eight Two overseas. But I reckon, me personally, the best thing we ever did was we got to play CBGBs in New York, which is like you know the home of the mecca of punk rock. You know, over there where the Ramones started and Talking Heads and Blondie and all those bands. So we got to play there before it was um, turned into a, a retail outlet, which I'm not, I'm not even sure what, what it is now, but it's something like that. And we achieved a lot of, uh, you know, we got our, we got the guys from All In Descendants who are like our biggest influences to produce a couple of records and we toured with them. And so we, we did, we crossed a few things off the bucket list, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's, what's the wildest crowd you ever played to? We did a show in South Korea once to 45,000 people. It's on our DVD. And um, so we just got invited over there to play. And there was all these metal bands playing as well, like Megadeth and stuff. And uh, we didn't realize it was on this humongous stage in front of all these like massive, and they had like, they had like pyrotechnics and stuff that they didn't even tell us about, you know, like things going off on stage and flames and bombs and stuff like that. That was the most out of control thing we've ever done. Then we went back to the hotel and we watched the whole thing on TV because they filmed it with, um, you know, like five cameras and it was on like, it was on like the national television station. So I guess that was pretty gnarly, but we've done Warp Tour in the States, uh, you know, a couple of years and um, they're all pretty crazy. And Japan's always pretty mental as well. We've been over there a few times. So, yeah, it's some, some, some crazy stuff, you know. 
Yeah. Uh, you recently released How It Works, uh, an album which sold 35,000 copies in its day, which yeah. today yeah. would be awesome. Um, what, do you oh, mem- yeah. what are your memories of those sessions? Oh, that was like the first time we ever had money because we were, we were signed to an independent label for a lot of years. And then we finally got off shock and we got onto AMI. So we had a budget, you know. I just remember we spent a lot of money. We probably spent a quarter of a million dollars on a, on a record easy. Now, you know, most bands spend 20, you know, and that's considered a lot, you know. So we had that time where we, we could use any producer and any engineer and anyone we, we wanted to use. I mean, we got Tom Lord Alge to mix a bunch of songs and Kevin Caveman Shirley, who, who's done a bunch of Iron Maiden, Silverchair and all that. We, got, we just got to work with all these amazing producers and learn a lot, you know. Uh, Cal Utonyama produced it and he was, he was a bloody, he did uh, at the same time, or right after that, he did 28 Days um, Up Style Down. Um, and it was just a crazy time. Was, we, we, we just got to do a lot of shit. We got to record some of the album in, uh, in the Mad Max Beach House in Aries Inlet. And uh, we got to, you know, buy all new gear. We got to like, you know, we just, uh, we just sort of like had a certain freedom that we'd never had before, I guess, you know. So uh, I, I thought it was cool. And it, uh, it really helped sort of get the band to the next level, I guess, where we could quit our jobs and do it for a couple of years without, yeah. without having to work, you know. Uh- Speaking of gear, well, what were you using back then and has it changed much? Uh, I think we were all a bit more educated on guitars now. Like we, we, especially Tommy, like not so much me, but Tommy's really, and even Nick who plays bass, he's really into vintage guitars. And every time we'd, we'd go to a city, like last time we were in South Australia, we went to a couple of vintage stores and, and they just drool over all the, you know, 952 Les Pauls and all that sort of shit and um, old Maiden guitars and stuff. But back then I was using, I think, a, uh, it was like a reissue of a, a Firebird, which is like a, an Explorer, like a classic Gibson guitar. Uh, but it went out of tune all the time. It had weird, weird tuning pegs and stuff, but I just thought it looked fucking cool. So I just kept playing it. But now I, I go for like a way go for function over fashion. Like I, I needed to stay in tune. I needed to have a fat neck. I needed to be like, be able to handle really thick strings. Cause I, I use 11 to 52s, which are really, really fat, heavy strings. So uh, we've, we've had this guy, Adam Cole working for us for a little while. And, um, he, he's a, an absolute, uh, on guitar. He, he could build a guitar from, from nothing, you know, like he's a, he's like an engineer and he's, um, he's made us appreciate the, the finer things about guitars. So we've got some good stuff at the moment. Tom's got a bunch of really cool Les Pauls and some Japanese reissues and stuff that he loves. So yeah, I think we're a bit more educated now. We should just get whatever bloody SG was on the wall at Gallon's Guitars. You know what I mean? But now we look for like certain shapes in, in the neck and all that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, I believe you got your seventh album coming out, uh, well, soonish. Uh, you're at the mixing yeah. stage. Yeah, it's all mixed and finished now. We've got actual little private sort of um, um, a little group that we can listen to it online, you know, because we're trying to sort out the track listing and all that. But it's going to be called New Rituals. And it's uh, the cover art's getting done now. It's exciting. It's like, I mean, we haven't done a record for probably five years or six years, but it's a corker, I reckon. So we're all really happy with it. Yeah. Is it self-produced? No, it's produced by Sam Johnson, who's done all the, all the um, Smith Street Band stuff. And, and we've, he used to work for us. He used to be a stage guy. Now he owns his own studio in South Melbourne. Um, and it's, it's awesome. He's got a great studio. He's got good ears. He's good with songs. And then we, we sent it to LA to get mixed by Steve Evitz, who's done The Cure and Dylan's Escape Plan and tons of, you know, Newfound Glory, tons of like American sort of radio bands. And he's, he's put a real sort of sheen on it. It's tough. It sounds tough, but it's got that sort of, sort of a glistening sheen on it. It's awesome. I love it. You can crank it and it still sounds good, you know. So, yeah, we're, we're happy with it. Yeah. Any particular tracks you're looking forward to playing live? Uh, there's a track called Surrender which I reckon is awesome. And there's a song called Get Out of My Head. And there's a Dragon cover. You know that song, Rain? Yeah. By Dragon? Yeah, that's on there somewhere. So that's always a fun one live because everyone knows it, you know? Yeah. Um, another thing you're doing, you're playing a Punters Club reunion. What are your memories of the Punters Club? I just remember at the time it was the best club in Melbourne by far. You sort of, if you could get a Friday or even a Thursday night, you'd get an automatic 200 people just because everyone wanted to go there. You know what I mean? So... And, you know, it's had, it's had some amazing shows like Jimmy Eat World and Civ and um, oh, just tons of American bands would come out and play there. But it wasn't like a big, I reckon it could hold 350 and they'd probably squeeze four in there if they had to. 
And um, it just had the best vibe. It was it was on Brunswick Street in Fitzroy, which was just pumping back then. And it was just, yeah, the people who ran it were really cool. I think it was Richard Moffat who used to book it and he was just really easy to work with. And um, you could put together a good lineup and he'd usually go for it and let you have a Friday night or a Saturday night. It was just a, a good pub and it sounded great, good PA, you know, so bands wanted to play there. Yeah. What are you most proud of with Body Joe? Uh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we're still going, you know, so like in our 40s and um, still playing, you know, so I guess we've done something right. I think with Body Jar, it's always been more about songs than image or anything like that. I feel like songs were always the number one thing, like the quality of the songs. And we always spent a lot of time swapping stuff around and rewriting shit. And I think that's served us well, I guess, over the years, you know? Yeah. Um, the Beer and Barbecue Festival's coming up. Um, for people who, who might be having a barbecue beforehand, uh, what are some recommended uh, punk albums that uh, could be the soundtrack to oh. your next barbecue? Oh, wow, there's so many. Descendants All is awesome. Uh, the new Rise Against album is unreal. Uh, I would say uh, Early Black Flag is always a good one. Um, Firehose, like that's kind of like, um, I love all that early sort of 80s SST punk, that, you know, I don't know, like anything that was on SST, like Dinosaur Junior or Minutemen or, um, you know, Black Flag, Descendants, All Chemical People. That's what I put on because it's that's just what I love, you know. But at the same time, when, when it's winding up, just go on Spotify and put on classic jazz and just listen to like Dave Brubeck or something like that, you know, just to wind down. That's what my dad's really into. Whenever he comes over, I just put on take five and he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cam, it's been great to chat. The Beer and Barbecue Festival is uh, July 23, 25, Adelaide Showgrounds. We look forward to that and the new album. Awesome, man. Thank you very much.